Hello and welcome to Oil and Acrylic Painting Fall 2020. My name is Bonnie Stipe. I'm the instructor for this course. Uh, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the course, go over the syllabus and the materials for the course. And uh, I'm kind of going to go over both the 12 a, 13A, and the BCD sections of the course all at once because the syllabus, general overview materials are very similar. Um, the major difference in the materials between the A's and the BCD's is that the BCD is going to have their own choice of supports. So we'll talk about that too when we get to the materials. Okay, so if you made it this far, I'm assuming you know how to get into Canvas. Remember, on Canvas, your user ID is your W number, and your password is the first two letters of your first name, the first two letters of your last name, and the last four of your W number. Okay, so most of our content is over here in the modules. You can see you have a start year and week one. All the assignments are going to be due on the Sunday of the week at 11.59. So each week, new content will pop up Monday. The old stuff is due 11.59. So right now, you only have week one visible. This class, as I mentioned, is both oil and acrylic painting together. And the first PowerPoints that we'll go over talk a little bit about the difference between oil and acrylic painting just so you get to know both of them we are meeting fully online this is going to be difficult uh, or challenging for painting um, but uh, you know there's also some exciting things that online can do too so I'm looking forward to that this semester uh, office hours are also online on Monday, Wednesday, 3 to 5.30 p.m. You can reach me through the email, bsnipe at chippewacollege.edu, or, or the phone number, 510-457-1464. You can also text that number if you have kind of a simple question. All right, so painting one, course description, is an introductory course that allows students to develop the basic painting skills and understanding of visual communication through studio instruction and lecture. Um, you're going to learn the basics of uh, painting techniques, processes, and mediums while allowing students to explore their own visual language. So, uh, you know, really with the painting one courses, where all the projects are based around different types of underpaintings and uh, different types of painting techniques. So the beginning, uh, you know, you're just kind of learning how to mix those paints and develop colors. And by the end, you're gonna be manipulating the paint even more. So you're gonna learn about both direct, indirect painting, historical maskers. Um, we're gonna show the principles of color theory uh, and also learning different types of painting techniques. We also, you know, we're going to paint on a variety of surfaces. Usually we stretch a canvas, but I'm going to ask you guys to find some alternative materials to paint on this semester. The first few projects were painting on paper. I'll talk about that when we get to the materials. So it's going to be important that you get your things together as quickly as possible because those materials are going to let you do the assignments starting next week. That's kind of, I'm not going to read the syllabus word for word. That's one of your first assignments is to actually go through and read the, the um, uh, syllabus thoroughly. So if you have any questions, you can let me know. We said this course is conducted totally online. If you don't have access to a computer or Wi-Fi, uh, Academic Services does have some uh, computers that you can take out or uh, mobile hotspots. I would also say 
having your uh, cell phone is really helpful for this class because you're going to take a lot of pictures of your work and the Canvas app works really well to do that with. Actually better than the computer. Netiquette. Netiquette is a set of rules for behaving properly online. Um, you know, sometimes cyberspace makes it easy to forget that they're interacting, that you are interacting with other people. So you want to really um, think about what you're typing and saying to other people. Uh, be sensitive of the fact there will be people from different cultural and linguistic backgrounds from yourself, as well as different political and religious beliefs. Um, you know, in art, exploring those differences is really important and also, you know, voicing your point of view. But at the same time, you want to keep an open dialogue and be respectful of other people's opinions. So that's very key online. Have good taste when composing your responses in distance forums. So swearing and profanity, it should go without saying, is not allowed. Also consider that slang could be misunderstood or misinterpreted. So really think about what you're saying to other people in typing. Don't use all capital letters when composing your responses. On the internet, this is considered shouting. It's also regarded as impolite or aggressive. Remember to be respectful of other people's views and opinions. Avoid flaming, meaning publicly attacking or insulting other people. Uh, it can decrease your chances of getting all types of different points of view. Be careful when using acronyms. So meaning, you know, instead of saying something like frequently asked questions, you type FAQ. Some people might not know what it means. So always type the full um, uh, the full thing out first, and then you can start using the acronym freely after that. Make sure you're using good grammar and spelling. Avoid using test messing shortcuts. You know, if you have a mess up in grammar or spelling here or there, that's expected. I'm sure you'll find some of mine, um, but we're going to try to do our best. That way you won't be misunderstood in what you're saying. Evaluation, your, base, your grade is based on your class assignments, class participation, involvement in critiques, level of craftsmanship, willingness to experiment. Um, each project has a rubric associated with it, so you know what your, the course objectives are. Improvement is also one of the things that I look at. Everybody's starting at different levels, so um, how much you're able to improve your own skills is actually something that will boost your grade up. Online attendance. Oh, oh, one other thing about late work. I do accept late work, so don't just not turn something in. I do deduct some points for turning in late, but nothing hurts worse than a zero if you just never turn it in. Online attendance. Um, students in distant education are required to attend classes and participate. Uh, students can be dropped for non-participation, so I'm really going to be looking at that these first couple weeks. Make sure you're completing assignments so I know that you're participating in the class. You are required to keep a sketchbook for this class. Um, it can't. This is something uh, I'm kind of open-ended with. You know, it could be a traditional sketchbook. It could be loose-leaf paper that you take pictures of and upload to your sketchbook assignments online. You do have preliminary sketches that you do have to upload so that I can help you make some decisions. So make sure you have something to do that on. Academic dishonesty and plagiarism. Uh, make sure you're representing your work as your own. Do not copy and post somebody else's work off the internet as um, your own work. That's very important. There is some serious consequences for doing that. Uh, mental health and stress management. Shibo prides itself in creating a learning environment where students are valued and supported in their academic, career, and personal development. We do have a lot of support services to help you. There's a link there. Um, go check it out. Uh, students with special needs, we do have a DSRC center. Phone numbers there. I'm going to add the link to the DSRC itself here because I think they're only doing uh, virtual for the fall. Uh, but also go to them if you need any help or accommodations. Feel free to talk to me about your accommodations even before you get the sheet from them. 
waste disposal statement. So um, those of you in the oil painting classes, you guys will be dealing with solvents um, that you're going to need to pick up from the school. I have some pickup hours Wednesday from 1 to 3. Another instructor is coming from 11 to 1 on Thursday and then the evening from 4 to 6. Uh, you can come in and pick up the uh, solvent at any time. You need very. You need to follow the instructions on that, especially in your house. You can't put it down the drain. Um, there are some specific ways you use it to clean your brushes. When you're done, you need to bring it back to campus. There's also um, some other specific safety guidelines that I'll go over in the demo videos. You need to make sure you're following those. Um, especially while working at home. So even though we're not on campus, you're still going to have some safety regulations that you need to work by. And that's for your own, you know, safety and well-being. Also, at those uh, pickup days, I have some tabletop easels. I would suggest anybody who doesn't have an easel home to come by and get, a, get an easel from the school to borrow. You have to return it. Um especially with oil paints because they take a long time to dry. Um, working flat on a table can be really difficult. Uh, it also enables you to see it more easily. So um, if you don't have an easel, I'm assuming most everybody doesn't, please come by during one of those pickup hours and you can borrow one from the school. We also have some other materials if you are... Um, Indeed, uh, if there are special circumstances, it's going to take a while to get your materials. We have an equity closet for uh, students with financial need. We also have a scholarship. You'll see it in the email that you're going to receive today. Um, uh, it's $500 you can apply for that's need-based as well. Just general course outline. We do have nine paintings that we'll complete this semester. I always tell my students uh, that Leonardo da Vinci in his whole life completed 12 paintings. And in this one semester, you're going to be uh, completing nine. So you should be very proud of yourselves. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the materials I have 13a listed for some here so I will start with that one so um, some of these are the same for both the first one is acrylic gesso if you buy the kit all these things are in the kit that's already in there uh, I also have some gesso at school you can borrow the gesso is what we're going to be prepping our supports with just to show you. Uh, Blake is somewhere you can get your materials. Um, Hobby Lobby and Michaels should both have all the materials that are on this list as well. Dick looks a little bit cheaper because they have a student discount, though. But there's a variety of places you can get them. If you get it from the bookstore, they're going to have you do an order pickup. You order it online, order pickup, and they'll call you. Uh, at and you can schedule time to pick it up. So, gesso is a primer traditionally made out of animal bones. Um, just to kind of show you, there's different grades. Student grade is what we'll, we'll use. And you only need a quart of it. This is a gallon. Um, you definitely will not use that much of it. If you come into the school pickup day you can, and bring a container for gesso, I do have some there for in the equity closet. Uh, colored, sorry. I'm trying to remember which one has some smaller sizes just to give you an idea of price. Usually the student grade. There you track. The pint is nine dollars. I think you should expect to spend around ten dollars for the gesso for the smaller amount. You can even get smaller than a pint if they have a quart. 
Okay. Four sheets of large heavyweight paper must be 18 by 24. You also need a board to tape it down to. Some kind of hard surface, especially if you're borrowing the easel, it's got to be on something hard. You could use an old board that you have around your house. We have boards at the school that you can also borrow when you if you pick up an easel, so you can take them both at once. Uh, because we are going to prepare the paper by gessoing it and uh, taping it to that board so that you can paint on it. Um, any heavyweight paper will do if you have to buy paper. Uh, if you get the kit, I also have paper in the studio for you that you can use. Um, a multimedia paper is a good one. You only need four sheets. They sell them individually at Blick, which is cheaper than having to buy the whole one. Um, just gonna show you. This one's kind of expensive. They have cheaper ones that are like two dollars or uh, I'm gonna have to put in drawing paper. Something different shows up every time. Um, you know, it can the paper itself could actually be drawn on or used, like an old drawing you don't like because we're going to gesso over it, um, whatever's underneath. So if you have an old, like if you were in a drawing class before and you have old drawings that you don't like, you could actually use that as your paper that you're going to gesso and like use the back side. Basic mediums, you got two mediums you're going to use if you're in acrylic paint. One is the retarder. To show you, this slows down the paint itself, it slows down the dry time. We're going to use that on the second project. The other one is matte medium. This we add to thin out the paint. Acrylic paint is made out of. Um, plastic so uh, it has a binder that fills it um, I will say some t certain types of paints oh sorry those matte acrylics um, certain types of paint well, they'll have the matte medium and a retarder mixed together but you definitely need a matte medium separate from the retarder my favorite is the U track matte medium, but they have Liquitex is another popular brand. I'll show you that. You don't want the gloss, you want the matte just so it's kind of just average. It's same thing around six, seven dollars. Notice this whole pandemic has made art prices seemingly go up by about a dollar or two, which is interesting. Okay, brushes. Now the brushes are gonna be the same whether you're in oil or acrylic. I'll mention that again. You want a variety of brushes. You'll see in the intro uh, PowerPoint, there's a variety of different types of brushes. Um, you want a number of flats and um, rounds. You can, uh, this is kind of suggested uh, brushes there. The brushes themselves, you could spend really almost an, any amount of money on brushes. They get very expensive to very cheap. They also have, you know, them by acrylic and oil. Oil and acrylic basically are the same brushes. They have a longer handle, typically watercolor shorter. Um, sometimes, I'll just click on the oil. Uh, people are more likely to use these, these natural hair board bristle brushes with oil, but you can use them for acrylic. They're just more textured. Um, so I'm going to show you my, oh, wrong one. Um, I'm just going to show you what they look like. You can see them here. 
Um, the flat is the one with the little flat top. The round is the second one there, sort of a circular one. You want some little, some big. Um, synthetic is much smoother. There's the synthetic. Um, it might be under, oh, I clicked on natural hair. Synthetic is a little cheaper. It gives a smoother um, surface. So if you want like finely blended surfaces, synthetic is the way to go. If you got the kit, it has synthetic brushes in it. Um, but these can range wildly too. I'm just trying to see if they had the Sizzling. It's sort of a popular brand. Looks like something like this. You can kind of see they're a little flatter and smoother. Um, you also need a large two or four inch household paintbrush that's a little bigger to gesso your pieces of paper with, as mentioned. Paint colors, these are some suggested paint colors. You definitely need titanium white, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre. This is kind of a little messed up on here. I'm going to have to fix the spacing. Cadmium red, alizarin crimson, Mars black, um, cerulean blue or cobalt blue, phthalo blue, small tube. Um, what you really want is a warm, cool, a warm and a cool of each one of the primaries. Um, I will show you my vortex first. A2 is in the, well, I'll show you A2 because it's in the kit. I forget, I have to look at it. This is the one that's in the kit. Um, but what you're going to get is a uh, a warm and a cool of each one. So alizarin crimson is a cool red. The cadmium red is sort of a hotter, warmer red. And they mix different differently. Like you'll use one to mix your purple, use one to mix your orange. Um, so you can kind of see how there's just slightly different temperatures between each one that you're meant to get. The cobalt versus the ultramarine down here. Um, so just a little bit different. Um, for those of you, the colors are the same for oil and acrylic that I suggest that you get. Um, your tubes of paint are going to be much bigger for acrylic because you kind of go through them faster. Oil you can save. Let's see, you're going to need two large canvases or MDF board or alternative boards. That is not in the kit. Typically we stretch a canvas, uh, but I'm going to have you guys look for alternative sources or you can buy two canvases to paint on. Same 4x4, four 12x12, four, 12 12, around that size surfaces. If you buy the kit, there's some boards already in there. You could also... Um, like I said, there's some alternative surfaces or papers you could use for that as well, especially right now with the pandemic going on. Other materials that aren't in the kit, you need a water container, uh, plastic or vinyl gloves, rags are better than paper towels. They clean your brushes better. Palette knife. Oh, the palette knife is included in the kit. I should show you that. This is what we're going to mix our paint with. This is the same for oil or acrylic. It's easier to mix your paint with a palette knife than it is with a brush, so this is important. It's something like this. Oh, I want to get to the good, all different kinds of them. I have one in our intro painting. Uh, you can kind of see there's a good example of variety. Some in different shapes or sizes. Um, one of my favorites, that one, although the one in the kit looks more like that. Um, you're also going to use them as a painting tool later on. And then, uh, sketchbook, we talked about something to keep your paints and brushes in. 
uh, you'll also need a palette. This is not in the kit. You'll see an example in the uh, intro PowerPoint. But the palette that you need, uh, I typically suggest something made of glass, like an old picture frame, something that's easy to clean, Gla that it's glass is very important because you can you know, clean it up more easily than a, a normal um, normal container. Uh, for acrylic, they also have these things called wet palettes that some people like. They're a little more expensive, but they can help save you on paint costs. Um, come with these little sheets inside of it. Oops, I clicked on Amazon instead. And they have like a little sponge underneath. Some people like those. They're, oh, that one's cheaper. I don't know what size that is. They're around $20, but some people really like those. Okay. Or else, like I said, you can use an old picture frame, something like that. Masking tape, you're going to need this that, uh, in order to stretch your canvases. There is masking tape actually in the kit, um, but if you're not buying the kit, you're going to have to buy it separate. Oops. Um, plastic wrap to help keep your paints dry or from drying. Two containers. Um, you're going to use the two different containers to rinse your brushes in. And that's kind of it for the uh, acrylic. What's different for the oil, um, you have the same grounds. The mediums are different. So for you do have a solvent that's a Gamsol that is not included in the kit. I do have it for you to pick up. So you come into one of those pickup times. It's very important that you only use Gamsol. Some stores don't carry Gamsol. It's the safest for you to use, it, so especially working from home. It's very, very minimal uh, amount of turpentine in it, like 0 0.001 compared to 0.1. That's actually a huge difference. Um, and um, it's considered the, the safest brand. Um, Uh, the linseed oil. Linseed oil is the medium that the pigment is suspended in. Oh. Um, once again, right here, you can get the smallest one they have. I'm just going to click on Gamblin because they're a good brand. Um, Five dollars, you can get the smallest one they have. Damara varnish this is going to be when we make our classic medium, it's what gives oil paint that sheen. Just to show you an example, Um, something like that. Sometimes they come in metal boxes. It's made from tree resin. Squeeze bottle. Um, those little travel shampoo bottles work really well. They sell these squeeze bottles Ooh. at uh, you want the one with tips. They have one without tips. You just want like a little squeeze bottle there like that that you can mix your mediums in. It's important you need one, at least one. It's nice to actually have two. Um, and two containers for your Gamsol, one to uh, clean your brushes, one to add to your paint. They have to be glass with a lid. It's very important. The glass uh, helps kind of protect and it causes it not to eat through in the lid so it doesn't evaporate um, into the air while you're working. And then brush sizes we already talked about. Paint we talked about. 
Windsor Newton is a good brand. Dick Black has a good brand. Gamblin is a good brand. Their 1981 is a, also a good brand. Same thing with the canvases. Most of all these are same. Palette knife. The one thing that's different, uh, if you would like that, since oil paint takes a while to dry, it's nice to have a um, a drying medium. This one you could use lens lens um sorry liquid or galclid. Both of these for in house in house use are a little bit more odorous, so make sure you're somewhere well ventilated if you're using one. The galclid medium comes in the kit. Um, instead of uh, it possibly taking two three days to dry it dries overnight so it is actually very nice to have um, but like I said it is this one they're a little fumier so you need to use them somewhere that by a window that's ventilated they do actually gamblin if you're going um, they have some solvent free versions of it which is kind of nice um, which I'd be open to you getting to, uh, since you're working at home. They have this whole uh, thing of uh, solvent free. You can't. They don't sell it at regular stores, unfortunately, like Hobby Lobby, but um, Michaels has it, and they're actually about the same price as the other ones. So if you did want to get a solvent free medium, you could, especially since you're working from home. Even though that's not on the list, I can add it because normally I have such a work in the studio. We use the stinkier dryers. Okay. Um, and I think everything else palette, same thing. For oils, you want to get something you can keep them in, not you don't want a wet palette. Um, they do actually sell these. Um, Let me say oil palette. They sell these palettes for oils too. That are like glass and have a little lid on it that's nice and neat, like the other one that you saw in the window. Um, but the best one to use is actually, like I said, just a glass picture frame. Your oils will stay for a long time if you just wrap it with plain old plastic wrap. And the rest of it, the rest of these are kind of the same. Gloves if you're nervous about getting oil paint on your hands because it takes a while to get off. All right, that's it for the materials. I also put on here. Oops. Um. I also put on here a spot for you to ask questions about class materials. So. Make sure if you have questions to go ahead and put them in there. So I'm sure your classmates probably have similar questions. That way we can all kind of um, answer and sort of see them all together. All right.